Hey guys, what's going on? Hope everybody's having a good day out there today and really appreciate you guys making a little time out of your day to watch the video. Today I got some really good info for you. I'm going to talk about how to catch them on big swim baits in the fall time of the year because guys, the last two or three years, this has become a deal. There's been a bunch of big fish caught on them. There's been a lot of tournaments won specifically in October and November. So I'm going to give you guys all the juice on what you need to look for just sort of an overview to get you started if you're not real familiar with them. And even if you're familiar with big swim baits, you might uh, learn something here you can put into your, your uh, game plan with that. Um, real quick, just wanted to give you guys a reminder if you're interested, especially in any of these big mag drafts, bait works here in Springfield, Missouri. He's got a huge stock of them. I'll include the link in the description. And if you use that link, it's a good way to support the channel here. So much appreciated there. Okay, guys, we're going to talk, you know, the, the fall swim bait glide bait deal it's like we're going to talk specifically about the big swim baits here this time the swim baits are the soft bodied lures i mean you've got the glide baits that are the hard bodied ones Let me get you here. like this which this is something for a different video but specifically we're going to talk about the soft swim baits because they're fished a little bit differently for the most part the big swim baits like this the the range that you can fish them as far as the depths is a little bit more versatile Glide baits, for the most part, they're designed to keep fairly close to the surface. And the big swim baits, like this uh, Mega Bass Mag Draft, you can fish them, you know, in fo a foot under the water or 30 foot under the water. So they're a little bit more versatile in that in that period. So first of all, if you want to get in on this, it requires a little bit of a shift in your mentality in the way that you fish. I mean, you guys that have watched the channel before, we've talked about big glide baits and swim baits before. But specifically what I'm gonna talk here is the fall applications for them. When you decide to try this technique, when you're using a bait that's over eight inches long, and most of the time you want an eight incher, so you don't want anything underneath that because if you do that, you're taking away that entire class of fish that could be caught on these eight to 10 inch sw swim baits on there. But when you go to that big, of a swim bait, you know, you're talking about if you if you get five bites a day on them, you've had a great day. Most of the time you're looking at one or two or three bites a day, but these can be big fish. They can be the biggest fish that you catch all year long. So that's why a lot of people don't fish them is because it's a low percentage, very high, high reward, low percentage type of a thing. Um, most people don't want to go out and throw a six ounce lure all day long for two bites. Now, if you catch a 10 pounder on it, it might be worth it, but a lot of people don't have that patience. So if you want to try this, try to get into that frame of mind that you got to have one rod out and that's all you're going to throw. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the application for it, what you want to look for. The first thing you need to talk about is the area where you want to fish these big ones. The thing that you're going to find out about a big swim bait, specifically over a glide bait, is these baits I'd like to fish them over a little bit deeper water. So I'm concentrating on the big swim baits on points like main lake and secondary points off the ends of deep boat docks, bluff banks, steep banks, something like that, over the top of submerged timber, places where the bass have to come up on the bait and, um, from a considerable distance. That is how you're going to catch your big ones. When you're around these areas that have deeper water and you've got a combination of some various mix of cover and you've got suspended and bottom bass both all this is a mix to catch big ones on there because if you if you fish like say for example a main lake point that a lot of people do in the fall time of the year if you pull up to that point you might catch five or six fish on a shaky head on that point but they might be a pound a pound and a half fish there may be an eight or ten pounder down there just swimming around it's just not interested in that. It's not interested in, in its expelling its energy for a little weenie worm. But something like this is a big commitment. And they know if they get something like this, it's going to hold them over for a week or so. So you, you're after that minority of giant fish in a particular area. And those are the best areas to, to fish them. So concentrate on your steep banks, deep docks, points, that type of stuff. The next thing is time of day. If you're going to catch a big one on a swim bait, it's going to be in the middle of the day. Very, very seldom are you going to catch a bass, a big one on a swim bait early or late in the day. It's usually always in the middle of the day, right when you don't think they should hit it, but that's when the bigger ones get it. 10 to 2 is going to be prime. 
Another consideration is you got to have some wind. If you don't have wind on these big giant swim baits, you're not going to catch much. I've caught them on different sky level conditions. You don't necessarily have to have low light conditions, but you do need the wind. Next consideration is water clarity. You've got to have, I think, at least three foot of clarity. Ideally, I like three to five foot of visibility for this to work with about a 15 or 20 mile an hour wind. That's ideal. So the next thing is equipment. <clears throat> These things are so big, most of them, you cannot fish them on just like a flipping stick. A flipping stick, you feel like you're going to break the thing when you cast them. So you got to beef up to an eight foot heavy action rod. I like that Mega Bass Warhammer. You, sometimes you need to go to an upsized reel that holds a bigger line because you need to fish these on 25 or 30 pound test line. I use Seaguar and Viz X fluorocarbon with it. Um, and another key with this is make a long cast with it. You want to make these long bomb casts because when these things hit the water, it's like you threw a dang brick in the water. And one of the things that I like to do with it is, you know, the, the retrieve on it is I'll just start reeling them in. I'll reel it for like five feet, then I'll just speed the reel handle up for maybe a crank or two just to give it a little bit of action. Then just start slow reeling it back in and speed it up like that. You don't want to work them too fast and you don't want to crawl them. Just sort of like a medium slow deal with an occasional quick turn of the wrist like that. That's usually when those fish bite. Also, you will notice on these big baits, if you get you know, say, say if you get 10 fish interested in them in the course of a day, eight out of the 10 fish that you get looking at this thing, are not going to bite it. They're going to follow it and they're going to track it and not hit it. So one of the things you can do is when you get, if you have one following it, do a figure eight around the boat, just take your rod tip and just go like that all around the boat. Just do a figure eight, sort of like they do for ocean fish. And a lot of times you can catch those big ones doing that. So anyway, guys, just a few quick tips on it. Get you some big swim baits. I got these big mag drafts, uh, eight and 10 inchers at uh, Bait Works in Springfield. Got the link in the description there. And uh, if you want to spice up your fishing a little bit, give them a try. So uh, let me know how it goes, guys. Appreciate you guys watching the video, and we'll talk later. See you.